What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about crash recovery. So I'm not talking about how to actually recover from a crash when you've had one. I'm actually going to be talking about a feature within Betaflight 3.2. So this new feature is called crash recovery and what it does is it basically looks at your gyro air um, and a few other things and determines when you have actually sustained a crash. So once you've gone into a crash, it will then turn on level mode, leveling the quad off, giving you a little bit of time to regain orientation, and then continue on your way. So the way this feature actually works is it looks at the gyro air, and after it reaches a certain threshold that you set, it will then enable the level mode. Once level mode is enabled, it will actually hold that for however many seconds you tell it to. So if you need a little bit more time to regain orientation, then you can have it set to stay in that longer. If you just want to simply get it into level mode, get you stabilized and back on your way, you can set it at a little bit lower value. So all it does is level you for a quick, quick second and then back off on your way. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to hop over into the Betaflight configurator. We are going to go into CLI and I'm going to show you all the different parameters, explain a little bit about them, and then also show you guys how to set them up. If you know how to use black box, that will help you a lot uh, with setting this up. But if not, you can still get it set up pretty well. Some other cool things about this feature is it'll give you an idea if your quad is underpowered or if your PIDs are too low. Uh, because we're going to be working a lot with the gyro air. So gyro air is basically how much your gyro is actually off from what is being commanded. And that's how this whole thing basically works is if you hit something then your quad has moved so the gyro has moved even though it hasn't been commanded and if it moves over a certain amount then it will hit that threshold and it will activate the crash recovery feature. So we're going to go ahead we're going to hop over into CLI we'll show you how all this works. All right, guys, so now that we are in the Betaflight configurator, we're going to go ahead and connect to the board. And then we're going to go to CLI. So in order to get this feature working, the first thing we're going to do is type in get crash. This will bring up all the parameters. Now, um, this is the new RC4, so it's a release candidate 4 of 3.2. And I believe there's a few things here that they have added. I do not know what all of these features do currently. I'm still messing with this as well, but I figured I'd do the video to give you guys an idea of how to basically get it working um, and give you a little bit of insight what some of these features do. So any of the features I don't go over are features that I'm not entirely sure on how they work yet. Um, but I do know this is still in development. They haven't released a whole lot of information on this yet, so it's still kind of a trial and error thing. Um, but this is how I've been able to get it to work and get it working well. So first thing we're going to go over is the uh, crash recovery feature itself. And the way this works is you have on and off to turn it on and off. And then you have beep. Uh, beep will make your beeper or your buzzer beep on your quad whenever it would have activated crash recovery. So it's a great way to check and see if your parameters are working properly. Um, because obviously you do not want the crash recovery to activate when you're just doing normal flying. You only want it to activate during a crash. So if you put it on beep and go out and fly, and this I believe only works if you have a buzzer, um, but you can go out and fly and do some line of sight flips and rolls and yaw maneuvers. And if you hear the beeper go off, then you're obviously activating the crash recovery feature with actual command. And you'll neither you'll either need to raise the thresholds up um, or possibly uh, add some P to your uh, PID tuning if it's a little dull. Um, it can cause the air to go off a little bit, which can cause this feature again. So, but next thing we're going to talk about is the D threshold. Uh, basically, this is how much D term has to be off uh, or go up to in order to activate crash recovery. Um, I've messed around with this a little bit and moved it up and down and haven't seen much of a difference made. Um, I've read that you can turn it off by just putting it at zero, um, I, which I don't know why you would want to, um, but it needs to be on at least one from what I've read to get it to activate crash recovery. The most important thing you're going to be using is the crash G threshold, and this is your gyro threshold. So the best way to tune this is figure out if, you're, if your setup is flying exactly how you like it to, then all you have to do to properly set this up is do some black box logging of flips and rolls and yaw maneuvers at max stick 
and find out what your air is, what your gyro air is, and then simply set this a little bit higher than gyro air. So let's say you're getting about 400 uh, degrees of gyro air. You can then go ahead and turn this up to say 500, and you would have to have 500 degrees of air in order for crash recovery to activate. Uh, the next thing is crash time. This is how many milliseconds it stays active for. So if you want it to stay on for half a second, then 500. If you want it to stay on for a full second, like uh, let's say you need a little bit more time to regain orientation, you can turn this up. If you want less time, you can turn it down. Then there's the delay, which is in milliseconds, how many milliseconds you want it to delay before activating crash recovery. A good example of this is if it activates early and you feel like you could have recovered from that yourself and would have rather recovered from it yourself, then you could go ahead and turn this up so next time it'll wait a little bit longer after it's hit the threshold. So let's say you have 400, it sees 500, it'll then wait so many milliseconds set by the delay before actually activating the threshold. If you drop back down into, uh, like let's say you, you move your sticks and get it back under control, within that range, it won't activate the crash. Uh, the next thing is crash recovery angle. This is how close it tries to, uh, like what angle it tries to bring it into uh, for the recovery. And you can see zero to 30. Um, so if you don't want it to completely come back 100% to level, you just want it to get close, then you could set this higher at say like 30. Um, and you know, for, for more advanced pilots that are able to recover from crashes quite well already, you can set this higher, so let's say 30 degrees, and it'll only bring it back to 30 degrees of level before taking uh, and turning itself off. Um, then there's the crash recovery rate. I believe this is uh, at what rate it will actually try to recover. So like what it will, how, how much authority it has over bringing it back to the recovery level. So whatever angle you have it set at. Um, I haven't messed around with this too much as well. And I believe this crash yaw, uh, limit yaw is, this has been new. Uh, I believe they were having issues with infinite yaw spins uh, in the uh, crash recovery feature. So this is something I'm going to have to mess around with a little more to, to know a little bit more about. But the main things you will need to know to get this working is the gyro threshold, crash G threshold, and then you can mess with the time and delay if you want, um, as well as the recovery angle to get it set up how you want it to work. Um, but like I said, the most important thing is going to be this gyro threshold. So you've got two ways to set that up. You can go ahead and turn the beeper on, do flips and rolls, and keep turning this up until it, does, it doesn't It does beep at you. If you don't have a beeper, then just turn it on and do flips and rolls until it stops trying to auto level on you. And then once you have it to where it's no longer auto leveling on you, I would then give it probably another 50, uh, maybe even 100 points from that, just to make sure it only activates when you are in an actual crash. So, so that's basically everything you need to know about crash recovery. Uh, this is still in its testing. Uh, that's why it hasn't been added to the feature list and doesn't have anything in the uh, GUI as of now. And it's a pretty cool feature, but like I said, it's still in its testing phases and it's there's a lot of information here that we are not being told, um, or at least it's very difficult to, to find the actual information from the developers on this yet. Um, so like I said, it's, it's in its testing phase and it's something cool that if you're bored and you wanna go mess around and try to get it working and uh, have some fun with it, then great. And if you get it working well, it can definitely be a pretty cool little tuning aid for uh, racing, especially for the novice racers that are still bouncing into things and hitting the ground. So um, anyways, it'll be nice to see when this actually comes into the GUI itself and a lot more information comes available for it. Um, but I think it's a pretty promising new feature that's uh, nice to see added to Betaflight. So hopefully this uh, helped you guys out. And if it did, make sure you hit that like button. If there's any more how to's that you would like to see me do go ahead and leave those down in the comments I like to hear from you guys and see what you guys want to see and um, if you like my channel and like what I'm doing then make sure you hit subscribe and also make sure you hit the little bell so you get notifications of all my new videos so hopefully this helped you guys out and you guys enjoyed the video and have fun flying